So many tears shed 20 years ago, and even more tears shed today on this 20th anniversary of 9-11, following five hours of moving, poignant remembrance from our colleagues at ABC News. We now welcome you to Tampa, where in their own way, this celebration of college football, Florida and USF, both honoring the memories of the heroes of 9-11. Here at Raymond James Stadium, alongside Dan Orlovsky, I'm Bob Wischusen. Thanks so much for joining us. And Dan, a celebration of Americana mm. is college football. We get to enjoy that today, but it's a tough morning all around our country, and certainly for those of us from the Northeast that lived through that, there are more tears shed today. Yeah, watching everything this morning and the beautiful job that ABC News did, a lot of words come to mind. Uh, shock, unknown fear but one that stands out the most to me is brave and there was a lot of brave people that risked and gave their lives to save the lives of others 20 years ago and i uh, thought it was awesome to honor so many this morning yeah those that run towards danger mm. are the ones that allow us to be in the candy store and enjoy college football which we will now do between florida and usf and for the gators good start last week this is a different kind of team though that Dan Mullen has this season, of course. Last year, disappointing finish. They were on the doorstep of the college football playoff. Their highest rank last year was sixth. Of course, Kyle Trask, he engineered an offense that averaged close to 40 points per game, mostly through the air. Eight players selected in the 2021 NFL Draft. Last week, though, their debut against FAU, a different kind of recipe for success, 400 yards on the ground. Different styles, same expectations, and it really starts with the quarterbacks. Emory Jones makes his first college start last week, some up, some down. What did he learn? How did he apply it this week in practice, and then how does he grow today? And Anthony Richardson, the wow athlete, how quickly can he close that gap to Emory and really be the quarterback moving forward? Well, we will certainly see, following Emory Jones, Anthony Richardson as he was electric last week. It will be an electric atmosphere between the Gators and Bulls. We'll be back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. The following is a presentation of ESPN on ABC. Welcome back to Tampa. Just about set for kickoff as you are watching ESPN College Football presented by Arby's and the American Conference on ABC. Bob Wachusen, Dan Orlovsky, Chris Button just about set for game time between Florida and USF. The Bulls won the toss, deferred their option to the second half. So, Dan, it'll be Emory Jones out there for the first two possessions as the Gators will start with the football. But... And we are expecting once again, we're going to see Anthony Richardson. And why not after his performance last week? A bouncing kick. And it ends up in the hands of Malik Davis. And he doesn't quite get to the 25-yard line. Well, after last week's performance by Anthony Richardson, Dan Mullen was very quick to say, Emory Jones is still my starter. Yeah, Emory Jones making his first career start last week, a guy that's had playing time. It's different when you just get thrust into the game, you play freer. When you're the starter, there's a lot more pressure. Everyone at home, just focus on Emory's feet today. If his feet are set, moving almost like pistons or a keyboard, typewriter, and going in the right direction, he's going to play significantly greater than he did last week. And he'll throw on the opening play from scrimmage. Well protected. That one's knocked away, though. Well defended by T.J. Robinson. Reached around Xavier Henderson and knocked it down. So it'll be second down and 10. Yeah. Right away, though, you see some of the stuff that showed up for Emery last week. I have in my notes. Played slow for a guy who's such a special athlete. He's a hitch late on that curl route. Malik Davis. Stood up after a gain of a yard on the cutback. So just like that, third down and nine for the Gators on their first set of downs. We're going to hear and see number 11, Dwayne Boyles, all over the field today. Huge stop on second down, unblocked at the inside linebacker. Well, Dwayne Boyles lost his helmet, so he has to come off the field for this third down and nine for at least one play. And this is the difference with this Florida offense this year in comparison to last year. Last year, third and nine, they still had a comfort level with the weapons on the outside and Kyle Trask. 
this year what receiver is going to step up and then is the quarterback going to be capable of making the necessary throw on third and long. Only a three man rush out of the pocket anyway is Jones high throw incomplete. So it's a three and out to start for the Gators. That'll get the Bulls fans here at Raymond James excited. Fantastic start by the USF defense. A little bit of a pass rush on the edge. Zone blitz, some guys rushing. Emory, I just want you to just hitch and then step in there and hit that in route. I love the climb in the pocket. Not necessary to go to your right, start to run. It forces the inaccurate throw. And like you said, the Bulls get off the field. Jeremy Crenshaw, excellent punt. Drives Weaver all the way back inside his own 20 yard line. And he's going to go down at the 21. That's a terrific flip of the field for Florida. 56 yard punt. Only a two yard return and the tackle made by Justin Shorter. Well, last week it was a 45 to nothing loss at NC State for USF. It was a bad performance, admittedly, for Cade Fort. We'll see Timmy McLean, the true freshman backup quarterback, at some point for the Bulls as well, but Fortin gets another chance to try and put some points on the board today. Simplicity. For Cade, Fortin has to be his focus. Play simple. Make the throws that are there when guys are open. If it's not, check the ball down and just play within side of your game. That's the biggest thing for him today. Start with a handoff to Darian Felix. And Felix with a stiff arm. And that's a nice gain on first down. Well, close to eight yards, Ventrell Miller bumped him out and watching the game last week you said something that sounds almost ridiculous when you see 45 to nothing as the final but you were encouraged by some of what you saw for USA. Yeah, I just didn't think the score was indicative of how the game actually went there was plays there they just didn't make. Fortin that looked like a broken play he's going to lose a yard or two brought down by Daquan Newkirk so now it's a third down for USF. That ball I mean Again, the perfect example of the difference of the same stuff from last week. Fortin has the throw at the bottom of the field. Just throw it, and it's going to be an easy first down. Four-man rush. Again, the pocket collapses, and it's going to be a three and out for USF. The first sack of the day. Jeremiah Moon drops Fortin. Now you're going to see a linebacker flow underneath left side of your screen. Bop to the tight end right there on the 30-yard line. That's where Fortin has to go with that football. Right when 89 turns his head, his tight end Brinkman just put it on his face mask and it's an easy first down. Moon, an off-the-ball linebacker, great pass rusher, but we've seen both of these quarterbacks just start a little slow mentally in half. this football game. South Florida. South Florida will call timeout. 30 out. seconds. We were talking both and the quarterback situations for both teams are somewhat the same. It unknowns at the starters. Got to grow. How quickly will we see the two respective backup now. quarterbacks? Might find out sooner rather than later. College football on ABC is presented by Arby's. We have the means. Only had about 37 hours to flip the field from what was a terrific Thursday night opener between the Bucks and the Cowboys to now the Gators and the Bulls. And when will we see Anthony Richardson? Looks like the formula is third possession. So Emory Jones will be the quarterback now. But you know, Dan, Dan Mullen said, I do not have a quarterback controversy. I just have two quarterbacks that can play. Where do you fall? Can you operate this way with two quarterbacks, or is this a quarterback controversy? Yeah, you always want to know who the guy is, and I don't know if Coach Mullen is so gung-ho on still not knowing. He really wants one of these guys to go and snatch the job, and I'll go back to it for Emory. It's about the details of the position starting to show up. Off play action, and there's a strike. Into USF territory. Rick Wells has a first down and a gain of 20. And that's a strength for Emory Jones right there. A little ball fake, you get him on the edge. Wells had such a big game last week, hopefully he's fine, but really good start to this drive. Getting him out athletically on the perimeter. Here's a toss to Damian Pierce. Breaks a tackle. 
That's another Florida first down. He picks up 15 more. Great run by Pierce. Sometimes it's BYOB, be your own blocker. You know, there's always going to be a secondary player that is left unblocked. That's the back's responsibility. He did a great job making the point. The safety for USF miss. Pierce again, turns the corner. He's got Keon Zipperer paving the way inside the 10 yard line. It's first and goal Gators down to the seven. Yeah, beautiful job by the left side of the offensive line. Watch Garage and Ethan White work. Zipperer gets his hand extended out. It's an awesome job on the perimeter again by Pierce, but that really starts with the left side of that offensive line kind of closing the edge of the defense and Pierce following. What's the old saying? Set the edge, build a wall? Yeah. They just did it. A seal here and a seal there. Already 37 rushing yards for the Gators. Here's again, this time, kept his footing. Looked like he lost his balance, hit at the line of scrimmage. He's at the goal line and in for a touchdown. Vincent Davis had a chance to pop Damian Pierce and bring him down right about at the line of scrimmage. What balance by Pierce to get in. Just watch Pierce finish this run and then some of the tight ends and big boys up front. You're going to see Garage. Zipper number nine right there getting in on the party. You mentioned the great balance in the hole, but I love the physicality that Pierce kept those feet going. Those legs driving, he gets himself in the end zone. Chris Howard adds the point after. And the Gators with a 7-0 lead, getting it done primarily on the ground. One big Emory Jones completion to Rick Wells, and Damian Pierce did the rest. A fantastic run. Look at Emory hold his eyes. Pierce, you got to make that one guy miss. He's yours. Left hand down, balance, and then find the goal line. Seven up in Gators. Welcome back to Tampa today, the 20th anniversary of 9-11, and a special scene over in Gainesville. Local firefighters and family ran the stairs at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium in honor of the 110 stories, the same flights of stairs at the World Trade Center. This was in honor of the 343 firefighters who died on September 11th. And as Bobby perfectly put it, we honor those that ran towards danger today to try and save the lives on 9-11. You did the same this morning. I just, it was my little way, you know, of joining in the, the Gainesville Fire Department. And obviously all the fire fighters across America, certainly the ones in New York City that you know, were true heroes that day. Well, coming over to the stadium this morning mm -hmm. to do the same stair climb here at Raymond James Stadium as Ryan Batie is brought down at about the 17 yard line. Our first opportunity to check in with Kevin Nagani. Columbus and the Gators off to a good start here in Tampa. Hand off to Darian Felix. Now last week you could see this USF defense for Jeff Scott got gassed, right? They gave up a ton of rushing yards to NC State in part because their offense could not stay on the field. Yeah, misses and misses and three and outs. It just taxed their defense against the good NC State team. So just to get a couple of first downs, and now they give themselves a third down and manageable as Latrell Williams comes within about a yard and a half of and moving the chains. For an offense that wants to play with tempo, getting a first down is huge because you can't get into the tempo, which is their strength, unless you get that first down. And it just looks as if Felix pushed the pile enough to pick up a USF first down. We talked about last week and sitting down with Jeff Scott and Charlie Weiss Jr., the offensive coordinator, it's, hey, you guys were close to some plays. There's some misses in the passing game that were there. 
there's a miss or two in their run game. How did you guys emphasize it as you see Coach Scott? They said, hammer the film, hammer the film, and get those guys to understand it's close. When they bring big Joshua Blanchard out as an eligible receiver, and Xavier Weaver had a step down the sideline. Weaver threw it, Kelly Joyner was wide open, and the trick play comes that close to working. Talking about being close, I mean, just beautiful play design formation. Weaver with a great throw. Kelly Joyner, the junior, out of Clement, Florida. It's right in your hands. Ah, uh, to beat Florida, to hang with Florida, you have to go make that catch. Now the misdirection worked, but they couldn't execute. Up the middle. About eight yards for Batiste. Third down and two. Batiste with a cutback. And he's got the first down. Two nice cutbacks by Petit. You know, you're trying to get that outside zone, that horizontal stretch, sideline to sideline in your run game. And once you see penetration by defensive lineman, he did a good job of kind of placing that foot in the ground and finding a seam to cut back in. And now this is when you can get into a play calling rhythm if you're Charlie Weiss Jr. for USF. He broke a tackle in the backfield, got back close to the line of scrimmage, no game. As Tyron Hopper made the stop for the Gators. Is there any recipe worse for an offense than one that plays with tempo and goes three and out, right? Your defense only has about 45 seconds to catch a breather over on the sideline. That was the problem, it seemed, against NC State. This already is progress for this USF offense. And a big thing is you don't want to be the same tempo all the time. Constantly changing your tempo to keep the defense off balance is big. Fortin to throw. Finds an underneath turnaround to Bryce Miller. He picks up six. It'll be third down and four for Des Johnson. And that's why Moon were there. And Fortin didn't do that last week. He didn't do it in the first drive. Oh, the easy throw is there. Don't try to be a hero. Execute like you have all spring and summer and get the ball out and find a completion. Now you get into third and four. Can you find a matchup against a likely man coverage for your offense? They love Miller in the slot. Looks like you're gonna get blitz at the top of your screen off the left side of the offense. Change your protection and again, find the matchup you love. They run away from the blitz with Felix. He gets a push and he's got the first down across the 50. Something you always kind of want to do against pressure. Watch the tight end, Brinkman, seal that 51, Ventro Miller, and then kick him out. And a great job by Felix getting up inside. Now they go empty. Four-man rush. Quick hitter to the sideline. Felix is there. He's got another first down. It's a great play call in that third and four to run away from the pressure. You make a big block, and all Felix has to do is get the perimeter. Now you get tempo and easy completion to the sideline. Now some rhythm for USF. Another screen out to the edge. Latrell Williams has at least eight, maybe nine. It looks like it is good for nine yards. It'll be second down and one. And something right now that USF is having a ton of success with is you're seeing these receivers sideline to sideline. They're flipping the passing strength, making Florida communicate and move after the play finish. Another screen. Latrell Williams again. He's got the first down. Jeremiah Moon tripped him up. You know, when you're running these receivers from one side of the field to the other, it forces everybody on the defense. Okay, defensive backs and linebackers, we got to go sideline to sideline as well. We also have to communicate while the ball is going to get snapped in six or seven seconds. All you're looking for is somebody to just be out of the right gap, angle, or leverage on the defense, and it's a successful thing for the offense. Out route to the sideline. Dollison's got it. Breaks a tackle. Lost his footing, or he might have found the pylon. It'll be first and goal, USF at the 10-yard line. Yeah, quick little easy route. This is awesome ball placement by Fortin right there to Dollison. Something that's starting to show itself again for this offense. Sometimes they're condensing their splits, bringing those receivers closer to the football. It forces the corners just to play a little bit more off, off and soft and creates easier throws to the perimeter. Arian 
Felix on the 14th play of the drive. Stopped by Brenton Cox right at the 10 yard line. Yeah, Charlie Weiss Jr., their offensive coordinator, is going to have a play built off that motion. They brought Dollison in motion. If he pulls that for him and just kicks a little bubble out to him, he's going to walk into the end zone. Right up the middle goes Felix. And now it's going to be third down and goal from the eight yard line. Yeah, third down in the red zone is always number one about. What is the defense going to give us likely? This is where you try to anticipate a coverage. More than likely from Florida, you're getting this umbrella. Already so much to better today on third down for the Bulls offense, but you're going to get four across. All right, so how do you attack? You want to high-low the safeties. Put somebody a couple yards inside the end zone, someone on the back line, see if you can get a ball over their head. And a timeout looks like it will be called from the sideline by USF. Second charge, timeout of the half. South Florida. Media timeout. In South Florida, equal the Gators. We'll find out in a moment. Just beginning a big sports day. Our ABC College Football triple header highlighted next by Iowa, Iowa State in Ames at 4.30 Eastern. Saturday Night Football presented by Capital One, Michigan, and Washington. And we'll also have the U.S. Open Women's Final this afternoon. Layla Fernandez taking on Emma Raducanu over on ESPN at 4 Eastern. So a lot to pay attention to. And I would think right now in terms of paying attention, this USF offense has the attention of the Gators. A 16-play drive that has reached the eight-yard line. we got a big third down and goal coming up. They've done, they've done all the little things right on this drive, both play calling wise and then execution by everybody in the offense led by Kate Horton. If, if I was USF right now and I'm in this huddle going, how do we convert this third and goal from the seven or eight yard line? I've got to start with Xavier Weaver. The junior out of Orlando is our best receiver. He's 6'1", but he plays bigger than that. He's got the ability to go extend his hands. And again, I mentioned this before the break. The challenge for a play caller is to try to guess right on the coverage. Anticipate Florida's gonna pressure us. You want to equip your offense with a plan. If they give us the defense that we think we're gonna get, let's run our play. But Kate, if you smell a pressure, you feel a pressure, and you wanna check to something that protects you, and then the ball has the chance to go into a one-on-one -on -one situation for an opportunity throw, let's get to that. It's all about equipping your players with tools here. Is there any part of this play where you're catching it in the field of play with the idea that you might get close enough to go for it on fourth down as well. A beautiful drive like this, yeah, you can think if you get inside that one or two yard line, if you love some of your game plan play calls, you can absolutely go to that. Let's see what Jeff Scott and Charlie Weiss Jr. designed for third down and goal from the eight after the timeout. Fortin, well protected, floats it in the end zone behind his intended receiver. And incomplete, he was looking for Weaver. He had him, he had him. This is a good job by Weaver. He's gonna have a wrap in route. Sometimes you gotta determine, am I going over the top or underneath? He goes over the top of Diabate, and all you want Fortin to do is throw that ball high, face mask or higher, where he can go basically dunk the goalpost and go make that catch. Just a little bit of a miscommunication by quarterback and receiver there, but Weaver does the right thing. So Spencer Schrader to try and cap a long drive with at least some points. And from short range, he does. It is now 7-3 Gators, and we'll be back in 10 seconds. Now a look from Ram Trucks. Ram Trucks built to serve. That incompletion from Cade Fortin to Xavier Weaver, Dan, was the first incompletion of the drive for USF. Fortin was six for six for 51 yards on that drive. 
until that miss. Well, that's the big thing that you want to focus on on the sidelines right now if you're Jeff Scott and Charlie Weiss Jr. That was a fantastic drive. I mean, the quarterback was efficient and deliberate with the football. The playmakers caught the ball, got upfield. Offensive line gave protection. So that's a very good drive. Sometimes you walk away going, gosh, what a great drive. You really won seven, obviously. But continuing to build up your players in their confidence is going to be a huge part of the game today for USF and for the program moving forward. The trick play at the start of the drive could have easily been a touchdown as well. So to have that disappointment of dialing up a play perfectly and not having it work out, but then to respond 17 plays and get some points on the board. Pretty good job. Classic from you, the Jersey guy. Find the negative. I'm trying to spin it towards the positive, though. All right. The positive last week off the bench was Anthony Richardson. And we were told by Dan Mullen, expect to see him in the third possession. Here is possession number three for the Gators. And it looks like Richardson's coming in. Electricity. That what he that's what he brought last week. That's what they expect him to bring today. There was some stuff that Dan Mullen Dan Mullen said, listen, he got away with plays against maybe an inferior talent opponent. He's not going to be able to do that consistently when we play the Alabamas and think it's going to be successful long term. He'll throw on his first play. And he's going to float one up top. Jacob Copeland in stride. Looking for the end zone. He finds it for a 75-yard Gators touchdown. Electricity. Just a beautiful throw by the red shirt freshman Anthony Richardson. An awesome job of Copeland going to track that ball. Howard adds the point after. And just like that, after a long USF drive gets them on the board, one snap for the Gators, and they extend their lead. Now, just a great route by Copeland. Push vertical, step on his toes, lean out, and then you've got to cross that safety space. But I love that. I love the ability to go track the football down. Not an easy catch by Copeland. Beautiful play designed by Dan Mullen. Ball fake. Watch the left side of the screen. Zipper sits down. And you tell Anthony Richardson, you're going to have a lot of space to go throw that football to. It's an absolutely perfect throw by 15. Watch this ball just jump out of his hands. Beautiful touch. Copeland goes and tracks it down. See his eyes? For all the young kids at home, watches it right into his hands. There's nothing better as a play caller, I would imagine, than you dial up a play, it should work, they execute it, and then you see the joy on your players' faces. Okay. <laughs> so now to how, how does USF respond? As they go on a long, time-consuming 17-play drive that gets them only three, and they give up a home run on the next snap from scrimmage. Here's Jimmy Horn. Check that Petit. And he breaks a tackle, gets out to about the 25-yard line. Well, what a lineup we have for you this weekend and Monday. As we said, the U.S. Women's Final at the Open is this afternoon on ESPN. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Washington in Ann Arbor against Michigan. The U.S. Open men's final is tomorrow afternoon on ESPN. And then week one, Monday night football in Vegas, the Ravens and Raiders. That's on ESPN and ABC. Peyton and Eli Manning are on ESPN, too, with ESPN Plus having even more options as well. Tons of ways you can enjoy Monday night football. A floater to the sideline. Xavier Weaver's got it. Terrific floating throw from Kate Fortin for 24 yards. Yeah, I love the pocket movement. Watch. Okay, I feel a little bit internal pressure. Eyes downfield, and let me just float this over the trailing defender to Weaver. Fortin seems to certainly have settled in after that first drive of this game. Underneath for about four yards to Latrell Williams, who loses his helmet. Walked down by Avery Helm. Another condensed split by those receivers. I mentioned it before, when you do that, 
it forces the secondary to get soft eight yards deep or something because you don't want to get up and press in a first down situation and condense splits because there's so much picks and rubs and meshes that come off that. You soften up and it gives easy access throws to the perimeter. Nice job by USF's offense again. Jaron Mangum, submarines for a yard. So now it's third down and five. Diabate was there along with Jervon Dexter. This is where they've gone to some quick game so far today. They've tried to create some matchups. Remember, last third down and five situation, Florida pressure. USF checked the play and ran away from it. So Todd Grantham, the defensive coordinator for Florida, might choose, you know what, we're not going to blitz here. We're just going to play man-to-man -man coverage and say, our guys are better than your guys. They're going to bring a blitz. There's the slant behind it, and it's good for a first down. Omarion Dollison was able to wall off the coverage and pick up six. And they went after the redshirt freshman Helm from Texas. You know, Dollison does a great job with the slant in the corner opposite Kyer Elam. The All-American is going to get a lot of work this season. Back to the near side to Dollison. Five more. Okay, so that is the fourth condensed split quick out. The double move is coming. The quick out and up. He's coming. Florida's defensive secondary is going to have to remain disciplined, not get too jumpy. Kate Fortin last week was 7 of 20 for 41 yards with a pick on the road at NC State. He's already 10 for 11 for 90 yards here in the first quarter. Here comes a blitz off the edge. They'll run away from it again with Felix. And he's about a yard and a half short of the first down as Chris Bogle made the stop. So another third down coming for USF. You know, you hear people talk about, well, we got to stay ahead of the chains. This is what it looks like. This is what staying ahead of the chains as an offense presents itself as. Well, they were four for six on third down before Felix is blown up behind the line of scrimmage by Zach Carter. And now what do you do? Now it's fourth down and about three inside the 35-yard line. You have to go for this, don't you? Yeah, I think so. Your offense has been super efficient in the third and fourth and short situations. These always come down to game plans. This is when the coaches kind of earn their money. Hey, in, in these situations, the defense is going to play in this type of coverage, and we can go after this guy. If I'm South Florida, I'm thinking going after 24, Avery Helm. I'm not testing the top of the screen with the All-American, Kyler Elam. I'm figuring out a way to work to the bottom of the screen in that bunch set. Fourth down. Fortin back to throw. Pressure coming. Tries to extend the play to the sideline. And it just did not have enough on it to get to Latrell Williams. USF gives it away on downs. Brenton Cox put Fortin on his horse. Yeah, they're really trying to sneak the tail back out against man coverage. And Florida does an awesome job of playing disciplined football and covering up in their guy. And Fortin really doesn't have an option. That's not a bad play by the quarterback. You'd love for him to kind of make something out of nothing there. But that rep was won defensively by Florida in sniffing out USF's play. And Dan Mullen staying true to his plan. Anthony Richardson, one pass, 75 yards, touchdown, right back on the bench. And Emory Jones is back in there at quarterback. He'll go play action. He'll find a cutter in Xavier Henderson. Henderson breaking tackles to the 50. I like that rep by Emory Jones because it, it just looks instinctual. It doesn't look like a guy trying to think his way through the position. It looks like a guy trying to just react his way through the position. Ball fake, someone in my face, kind of a sidearm sling snap to that wrapped slant and a good ball placement. Well, you said watch Emory Jones' feet. Yeah. What have you seen so far? Yeah, the first drive, it wasn't good. You know, it was very deliberate. And now he's starting again, play a little bit more reactionary. Well, he's going to run it himself here and spin for three. And that could take us to the end of the quarter. Florida does not have to run another play before the end of the first. Emory Jones is looking over. Dwayne Boyles made the stop. Well, they're going to line up. Looks like they may get one more play in before the end of the second, the end of the first quarter. Down to five seconds. One right. 
Ends the first quarter with a gain of four. Andrew Mims made the stop. So a third down for the Gators. When we come back to start the second quarter. Early on, the Gator defense harassing Cade Fortin. And it's been big plays since then. Jacob Copeland from Anthony Richardson to extend the lead. Welcome back. Emory Jones and Anthony Richardson are not letting their relationship get strained. Despite the questions of a quarterback competition, the two are very close. Emory referred to Anthony as his little brother. They both publicly supported each other on social media this week. And when you watch them on the sidelines, sitting next to each other, constantly chatting to each other in, pos in between possessions. Emory Jones has waited three years to become the man, having an opportunity now to be the starting quarterback for Dan Mullen. And he's got Anthony Richardson right in his rearview mirror. He'll keep one here on third down to start off the, the second quarter and come up about a half yard short. So with an 11 point lead, fourth down and a foot in plus territory. And Dan Mullen not hesitating. They're going to go for it. Yeah, with this big offensive line of Garage and White and Egwakon, they should go for this. Dan Mullen mentioned last night, Felipe Franks and Kyle Trask are both on NFL rosters. Both guys were at the quarterback spot here at Florida. And they just waited for their opportunities, and it worked out. A pitch to Naquan Wright, trying to get to the edge. Breaks a tackle and picks up the first down. A chance for a takeaway on downs for USF. And Makai LaPointe could not make the one-on-one -on -one tackle yeah, on Wright. Speed option off the defensive end. LaPointe is there. And it's a beautiful job by Naquan Wright. I mentioned it before, BYOB. Now, you probably think of that as something different. You know what I think of, yeah. Uh, but sometimes you got to make that guy miss, and that's shown itself a little bit by Pierce and Wright in this first half. Jet sweep. And Xavier Henderson got a yard. But, boy, when you think about the margin for error against an opponent like this, if you're USF, you have to make that tackle. Yes. Or you have to get that takeaway. You know, that if you have a chance to get a one on one to stop a team on downs when you're a big time underdog and you have a chance to maybe fight your way back into it and pull off an upset, that's just a tackle that Mikhaila Point can't miss. Aquan Wright to the 30 yard line. Two yards shy of the first down after he picked up seven. Vincent Davis brought him down. So another third down and two for Florida. Not only are you happier with the way Emery's kind of operating as a passer, but he looks more decisive when it comes to their quarterback run and zone read game as well. And this will be a false start. Looked like Richard Garage, the left tackle, jumped early. False start. Offense, number 76. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. And that's the first penalty for either team. But these are good situations for a player like Emory Jones to be in. Again, second college career start. So now you're in the third and seven range, 35 yard line, where yes, the goal is to go get that first down, but this might be four down territory. So the decision making is paramount in his growth and development in this situation. Jones steps up in the pocket, floats one down the sideline, looking for the end zone. He drops it in beautifully. Touchdown, Xavier Henderson, 35 yards. Watch Henderson here up top, Xavier Henderson, third and seven. So he's going to give him a double move. Sit your feet down at seven yards, stutter quick. The corner just hesitates for a second. It's just an absolutely spectacular throw by Emery Jones. But I love the play call mindset. Third and seven, defensive backs are always thinking, now oh, they're going to go to the sticks. They're going to run their route just to get the first down. And you see Dan Mullen's face. That's the second time a beautiful play call has been designed, called, and executed by these Florida quarterbacks. 21-3. The Gators went three and out on their opening possession. They have been deadly since. They've got three touchdowns on the board. Already 211 yards of offense for Florida. And 
We've only played two and a half minutes of the second quarter. Emory Jones looking like a starter. This season, Allstate will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to those universities' general scholarship funds. We thank you, Allstate. Bob Wyshusen, Dan Orlovsky, Chris Budden. Raymond James Stadium. Jones and Richardson each with a passing touchdown. Last week, only 153 total passing yards against FAU. They've almost collectively equaled that here in the first 17 and a half minutes. A little better. I think the big thing is both of those guys, Anthony threw one pass, but have been decisive with the football, specifically Emery after his first drive. And then there's been some explosion in the past game. The ability to push the ball downfield has definitely jumped up in the first half today. Well, tomorrow at 10 a.m., Sunday NFL Countdown Week 1. The premiere this season with Patrick Mahomes sitting down with former Chiefs teammate, now colleague of ours, Alex Smith. And then our Monday night football matchup sees the Ravens take on the Raiders in Vegas, 8 Eastern on ABC and ESPN this week, ESPN Deportes and the ESPN app as well. And the Ravens are beat up. Five guys on IR with ACL injuries. They've got to get some depth at the tailback quickly. Well, not too bad when all of a sudden you got Latavius Murray just kind of sitting there as a thousand yard rusher that they brought in. And Darian Felix finds a cutback lane and picks up about three and a half to four. Plus, they put Devontae Freeman and Le'Veon Bell on the practice squad. Yeah, I'm, I'm not thinking much about Devontae Freeman and Le'Veon Bell impact-wise. Thankfully, they have one of the best quarterbacks in football still in Lamar. But he runs some a bit. Guys. Yeah, he's not a bad player. <laughs> Blitz coming. Fortin off his back foot, has a seam shot, and overthrows it. Again, they try a trick play. They actually run a fullback out to the bottom of the screen, hoping the defense is going to run that way. And then off the left side of that screen, Weaver is going to try to take that seam. What you would love right there is Joyner to get that blocking, that blitzing linebacker to give me just a second to get that ball out better. Jeremiah Moon had a free pass to the quarterback. And the pass for Weaver was rushed by Fortin, so that brings up third down and seven. Again, the Gators show blitz. Here they come. This time it's much more effectively picked up. But that pass broken up. Intended for Bryce Miller. Well done by Jadarius Perkins. Yeah, watch Perkins, 27. He's a slot there. Now there's Miller, the slot receiver. But this is a beautiful job, Perkins. Drop your Now watch the left arm. That's outstanding. By uh, the transfer from Missouri. Do you see how he settled his feet, drove on the football, Gets on the receiver's back, but just bats that ball away with the left hand. That's teach tape. Defensive back play. Andrew Stokes, the Australian punter for USF, 27 years old. This is his second ever football game. Not college football game. Like the second ever football game he's been at. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Last week was his debut. It's a pretty good kick, 52 yards. Out of bounds, but it's 21-3 game. Both Florida quarterbacks have had the chance to play today. The play action pass moved the pocket for Richardson. I love his ball trajectory. Just a little love on that to allow Copeland to go track it downfield. Then Emory Jones gets into a third and seven situation. Watch his feet. One, two, three, hitch, hitch. He gets one on one with Xavier Henderson and throws an absolute pearl for the touchdown. A little bit of the Orlando Bloom. Archer, both quarterbacks have had the opportunity today and both have taken advantage of it. Well, Anthony Richardson is back in to begin this possession. He's played one play. It was impactful, as you saw. 75-yard touchdown pass. And he will start now at his own 20-yard line with a 21-3 lead. Bob Wyshews and Dan Orlovsky, Chris Budden. Malik Davis. Now to about the 27, maybe the 28-yard line for a gain of eight. If you're Florida. Can you live this way the whole season? Is it possible to play both Emory Jones, have a role for Anthony Richardson, and have this 
be like a symbiotic relationship between the two quarterbacks the whole year? You might be able to because of that man on the screen right now, Dan Mullen. You know, he's such a smart offensive mind. You can do it as long as they both play well. Davis picks up the first down. What I mean by that is if, if Emory Jones is the starting quarterback and he's playing good, but then they sprinkle in Anthony Richardson and he starts to struggle, I don't think it's going to happen. Then the team, the locker room is going to go, well, why is Anthony playing? We're, our best option is Emory. Or Flip, if Emory's the starter and he's struggling, Anthony comes in and you get those wow explosive plays, everyone's going to go, well, we're just better with Anthony. So as long as they're playing their well and the e playing well and their egos are away from it, yeah, because the play call is so good, I think you could pull it off. Easily shaking off a possible sack as Richardson, and there he goes to midfield and steps out of bounds. You can see the strength of a 240-pound quarterback. Combine it with that athleticism, he's really hard to bring down. Similar to last week, though, there's a little bit of a pressure he doesn't pick up, and he's good enough and athletic enough to shake it off against some talent that's not as good. But Dan Mullen brought it up last night. The question is, is he going to be able to do that against Alabama? Is he going to be able to do that against LSU or a Florida State? You know, when the talent is equal, and that's where he, Dan Mullen, wants to see Anthony Richardson grow at the position. Malik Davis into a mosh pit near the line of scrimmage. Obviously, if you're doing something that's working, sure, easy to stick with it. And sure. if both guys are playing well, why not let them both go play well? But over the course of a 12-game, maybe an SEC championship game, bowl game season, yeah. they're both not going to play well Correct. the whole year. Right. So when one of them invariably doesn't play well, what do you do? Do you stick with this formula and say through thick and thin, both of these guys are going to get snaps no matter what? Well, I think part of the process, number one, is how do they look in practice? You know, Are they continuing to practice the right way? And the second thing is, if one of them starts to not play well, why? You know, don't be so tied to, well, he, did, he didn't play good. Well, why did he not play good? Is it because we didn't protect the right way? Or, you know, he was off with his protections or he just missed some throws. If you figure out the why and you can live with it, yeah, I think they can go for a while doing it this way. You thought about quarterback run. Instead, it's a fake and a touchdown. Beautifully sold by Anthony Richardson as he hits Copeland for the score. The red shirt freshman sold quarterback draw, and it looked like USF bit. This is, this is why the is so good. So awesome by Richardson. Step up, psych, find shorter downfield. Copeland for the touchdown. College football presented by Arby's on ABC is brought to you by the new Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Could it be the best Coke ever? Well, that is the reaction of the USF Bulls when they were shown the debut of the brand new locker room at their training facility. Why not? But it's been all Florida against USF so far here in the first half. And Anthony Richardson and Emory Jones it's almost like anything you can do, I can do better. A two for two for 100 yards and two touchdowns day. Well, competition's a good thing, right? I mean, it can drive both to excel. Kick out of bounds, so this will give the ball to USF out at their own 35-yard line. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team number 71. Ball be placed on the 35, that 35 yard line. First down. Let's check in again with Kevin.
Ohio, eye opening. Yeah. Ohio State tackling like Booger McFarland. Oh. <laughs> that nice. And so it begins as Jimmy Horn picks up about four and a half. You mentioned the Florida quarterback room, and you used the right word, competitive. The big thing is to never allow it to be combative. You know, and there's a very fine line with how Florida can manage that within their program leading up to a huge week next week against Alabama. T tries to bounce it outside, and he'll lose yardage. Could not turn the corner and get away from Zach Carter. He lost three. Yeah, I think one of the big things that Todd Grant, the defensive coordinator for Florida, wanted to see out of his defense was really setting the edge, making sure that players like Carter and Cox and Moon don't allow the football outside of them. And there was a couple moments in the first couple of drives where it happened. It's a really good job by Carter there of making sure he holds that edge. So now it's third down and nine. Comes the blitz, Sporton. To the sideline, it's intercepted. Jeremiah Moon put big time pressure on Cade Fortin and Kair Elam. The preseason All-American gets the pick. He had three last season, and that's his first this year. I'd say, first of all, don't block. Basically a defensive end with the tailback. That's Moon right there, and they're going to ask Batie to try to block him. Not going to happen today, bud. And Moon puts pressure on Fortin. He's got to let it go early. That is an absolutely ridiculous interception by Elam. You talk about the ball skills. Wow. Full extension, the ability to kind of David Tyree it from the Giants on his head. That's a remarkable pick, but it, it all came down to Moon and his pressure. I feel old. I remember his dad playing for the Jets. As his dad, Abe, after going to Notre Dame and Kent State, spent time with five different teams in the NFL, including the Jets, and of course his uncle Matt, all SEC defensive back with the Gators and a first round pick by the Ravens. So the tradition continues, and Kyer might be the best of the bunch. That was a great pick. Starting at midfield, Emory Jones. Play action. He's looking for a big play. That's all dead and finds a check down to Damian Pierce. And Pierce will pick up a first down and then some. Gain of about 13. It's a great job by that offensive line. You know, it's one of the benefits of play action pass is given protection. How good has off Florida's offense been today? They started off Rocky three and out and touchdown, touchdown. And again, you see a one play drive and a four play drive. I mentioned it before, the big plays have showed up in the first half. Henry Jones spins for five, maybe six yards on what looked like a broken yeah. play. It looked yeah. like he was thinking about faking the handoff or maybe doing a zone read to one side. The back went the other way, Thad Mangum there to bring him down. Remember before I said you, you really wanted to see Emery play a little bit more instinctual and reactionary today? I, that's another example of it. A guy who might be trying to be perfect and thinking too much, tailback went the wrong way, oh, what do I do? Instead he's like, okay, I'm just going to follow my blockers, which you get taught as a young quarterback, and try to find something, and he did with five yards there. Now the option, and a crease for Jones. To the 10, to the 5, another Gators touchdown. Five straight scores for Florida. A little bit of a speed option to get off the edge. This time the man on the line of scrimmage, the left side of the screen, he's going to take the back, and Emory Jow just has to beat the safety. Vincent Davis makes him miss, cuts back inside. And like you said, another scoring drive for the Gators offense. I think Emory goes back to the sideline, finds Anthony Richardson, and goes, all right, your turn, bub. <laughs> what can you do, bro? Your, your chance. <laughs> You're up next. They've just alternated touchdowns. Three now for Emory Jones, two for Anthony Richardson. Five straight possessions 
that end in seven for the Gators. Now look at this move. Cookies, cut back. The superstar from Georgia runs away from Matthew Hill. Little dice roll, Gators up big. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think Booger likes any kind of food, whether it has seasoning or not. So uh, the last person that I'm going to take eating advice from is from Book. Yeah, well, the last person any of us are going to take food advice from is you. Some of the recommendations you have made on Twitter have been disturbing, to say the least. As Jimmy Horn gets taken down shy of the 15-yard line this afternoon, our ABC College Football Triple header continues. Number 10, Iowa. Number 9, Iowa State in Ames at 4.30 Eastern. And then Saturday Night Football presented by Capital One. Michigan, Washington. You can watch all the games all season long on the ESPN app as well. And Felix, cutback run for a first down. He picks up 13 yards. And Cade Fortin, it has been an odyssey to get to the point where now he is the starting quarterback at USF. The first drive of the game was a three and out, but the second drive of the game was a 17-play drive that resulted in a field goal. They got some rhythm going. Now off his back foot, floats one over the middle of the field. Terrible decision. And Rashad Torrance picks it off. There is a flag down, it looks like, as well. The, the flag being in the defensive backfield, kind of where the receiver and Torrance were matched up with, leads me to think P.I. Oh, defense, number three. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Ten yards, first down. Well, Jason Marshall, the true freshman corner, gets called for the foul. Yeah, it's a double move. Mentioned it before, Fortin moves and kind of just throws that ball up. Now, I don't know if he saw the flag. I don't know if he saw the P.I. I don't like that decision unless he had already seen that the flag was thrown by on Marshall for that holding. Because if he threw it up, it's a poor decision on his end. Felix picks up about a yard and a half. Chris Bogle makes the tackle. Yeah, I, I don't think... I think the, the holding happens well before that. Usually, so double move, right? When I sell a route as a double move, the corner, if it gets beat, you often tell the corner, hey, just grab them. You know, it's better to give up that penalty in the yardage rather than some, something to go over your head. So I think that flag happened sooner. Felix tries to get to the outside. Brought down shy of the 40-yard line by Amari Bernie. Chris? Yeah, Bob, a lot of miscommunication on the South Florida offense. During, in between possessions, wide receivers talking about where they should be on their routes. Kate Fortin trying to keep the rest of his guys cool. Not a lot rattles him. Trying to show some patience to the rest of his guys. Jeff Scott talked about execution. You know, in comparison last week, he said the effort was good. Our execution wasn't good enough. I asked, how do you get it good? They just said hammer it home, hammer it home. Shovel pass right into the blitz. Hammer. Rashad Torrance lays out Darian Felix. And it'll be a USF punt. And Torrance comes off the edge right here, right side of your screen, shovel pass. He's the last guy and walks right into Felix. Torrance, a guy that played on the field and got kind of got thrusted on the field last year. And, Struggled a little bit, and uh, they think he's developed so much defensively, and the, the flaws of last year, kind of, or the mistakes of last year have helped him grow. Stokes angles a punt to the sideline. So with the Gators scoring on five consecutive drives, all touchdowns, 
Will it be Anthony Richardson's turn again? He's two for his last two. Yeah, it was a beautiful play design on that last touchdown pass. You're going to see the play action pass holds the linebackers, moves the pocket, and he just has to set up and then throw that ball to space to Jacob Copeland, who just crossed that safety face. Now we fake the bubble, watch shorter in the slot, sell it. That safety's got vision on him. Copeland, just run by your guy. Bad eyes by the defense, fake the quarterback draw, and it's just a beautiful throw by Copeland. So again, I mentioned this, it's, it is it is play design. You know, the, the play designed by Dan Mullins, it's spectacular. But then it's also the players, both Anthony Richardson and Emory Jones, going out and executing it on the field. It's back to Emory Jones once again. He's got touchdowns on his last three possessions. He finds Justin Shorter close to the first down line to gain. Shorter's a guy that they want to get going a little bit. They'll find a way to get him the football. He's the transfer, six foot five, 230 pounds. As you see, Robinson hurt there, the transfer from Rutgers. But they want to figure out a way to get four of the ball. They, they, they need him once they get into the heart of their SEC schedule as a pass catcher. Play action, once again to the sideline to a wide open receiver again. It is Jacob Copeland. Florida with late flags thrown after the play is over. They're averaging over 13 yards per play offensively. And we might tack on a few more here. As Copeland is still after down. the play was over, personal foul. Unnecessary roughness, number 23 in the defense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. There's 23. Bad Mangum. Oh. So hopefully for Copeland, all that is is the wind being knocked out of him. He is able to get up and walk off the field. That is a no doubt about it, 15 yard foul. Yeah, and you, you obviously, the game is 35 to three, and if you're Jeff Scott, you're like, I want our guys to play hard, but you're not trying to take cheap shots either. You know, you're, you're not, that's not who you want to be as a program. And you certainly want Mangum to be a leader when it comes to how hard they're gonna play and not be tied to the scoreboard, but you don't want to be, have those late hits that are cheap shots coming from your defense. That's the first penalty on USF. Three minutes to go in the half. Lorenzo Lingard. For about a yard. Wayne Boyles made the tire. Boyles is a player that stood out on tape to me. I just, when you watch him, you, he, he belongs, no matter who the opponent is. Opponent is. He's violent, he's got heavy hands, he's Super athletic, he's very smart as a football player. He stands out for the Bulls defense. Led the team in tackles two years ago, but because, at least in part because of COVID, kind of a lost year last year. Emory Jones, sidearms one down inside the five yard line, and Justin Shorter could not hold on. That was a really nice throw by Emory Jones on the move. And it's one you just want to see four bring down. It's a good job by Emory. And he really gives Shorter a great opportunity to go make this catch. You've got it. Just so go secure that ball on the sideline if you're Shorter. And I mentioned it. He's a guy that they really need. They're going to need for him to go make those plays. It's not always going to be perfect. You're athletic enough. Go secure that catch. Malik Davis lost a half yard on third down and long. So playing it conservatively, the Gators. And let's see if they punt it, play field position. Doesn't really matter up 35 to three. They may decide to go for it, we'll see. Well, here comes the kicking group. I, I, I think this is a good decision by Dan Mullen. Again, I know it's not gonna be impactful for the game, but it's also a great game rep for your punter work on his hunting your gunners to go track the ball and see if you can pin someone inside their five or 10 yard line. 
Inside the 15-yard line, Jeremy Crawshaw creates the fair catch. And we've got a few of our upcoming AAC football games on ESPN Plus. This afternoon, seventh-ranked Cincinnati hosts Murray State at 3.30 Eastern. Next Saturday, the Bulls will take on Florida A&M. Those are just two of over the 20 games that we have for you on ESPN Plus this season. If you're a fan of the AAC, you got to have it. Sign up today at plus.espn.com slash AAC. I hope that we could get Coach Mullen's reaction after that punt by Chrisman. He was not happy because you choose to punt from 40, 35 yard line, and it's only a change of 20 yards or so. Mullen was very animated. Kelly Joyner picks up four with a flag thrown after the play. Personal foul, face mask, number zero of the defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Number three can stay in the game. Number three can stay in the game. That's the third Florida penalty, that one on Trey D. I thought it was on Brenton Cox and not Trey Dean, but I think that now if you're South Florida, minute 25 seconds left. You see here. Yeah, I think that's Cox, and I think it's incidental. That wasn't intent. You want to get into your two-minute rhythm here. Joiner bottled up right at the line of scrimmage. Mahmoud Diabate finishes him off for no game. I mean, these are good reps moving forward. You're, you play two Power Five teams in the first two weeks if you're South Florida. You're trying to figure out who's your quarterback for the heart of your schedule. These are great reps to get into really your two-minute offense and allow them to execute. Lob down the sideline. It's a jump ball. Trying to pull it in and unable to do so was Latrell Williams with Avery Helm there. This is a great job by Helm, the redshirt freshman who they've gone after today. Watch how he fights through. Okay, there, there, now pull the ball away. Man, that's spectacular. Because if he doesn't, Williams is going to go make that catch. And as he's falling down, he rips that ball away with the left hand, forces that incompletion. That's really well done. A lot of throws from Cade Fortin off the back foot with momentum going in the wrong direction. He'll hand one off here on third down and long, and Joyner get run out of bounds by Rashad Torrance, well short of the first down, with 45 seconds to go in the half. I think for South Florida, it's going to be big to go into halftime, because if you look at their sideline right now, and if Chris is down there, I'd love for her to tell us what the vibe is right now from her perspective, because from up here, it's just dead. And this is a program that is rebuilding. And the hardest part is when you get are getting beat up like this in the first six quarters of your season, you really need great leadership on the sidelines to allow guys to feel like, all right, we still got to go play. Henderson, that'll be kick catch interference. As he had signaled for a fair catch, and was hit pretty hard trying to go over to field the ball. So that'll be a 15-yard penalty against USF. Kick catch interference. Kicking team, number eight. 15 yards, he's spotted the foul. First down. So that will give the Gators the ball. Out close to their own 40-yard line. Yeah, and in comparison to South Florida, I think Dan Mullen should try to get some two-minute work in here today. Their quarterbacks have played so well. You see Emery's numbers and Anthony Richardson, two for two for a measly 78 yards of completion. Is that right? 58 yards? 58 yards of completion. Hey, yo. Seven <laughs> public school kid. 58 yards of completion. I think you want to get some two-minute reps in here for your offense. Well, Emory Jones will get a chance with 35 seconds to go in the half. 
Aquan right to his left. He laughed way too hard at the center. Spinning out of a tackle is Naquan Wright. Bouncing off South Florida Bulls. And he picks up a yard. That's a hard working yard. 23 seconds to go in the half. You've got three timeouts if you're Florida. You're also winning 35 to 3. I get that, but there's nothing better than getting situational football reps in real live games. It's not a disrespectful thing. It's Emory Jones is in his second career start. They're getting into the heart of their season. And who do they play next week? Yeah. I just think it's important to get as many reps as you can in those situations. Finds Malik Davis. And just the maturity of a quarterback to do that, right? Yeah. To make a good decision, yep. see the check down and take it. Yeah. And if you get a completion here on third down, you could pop a timeout and then get some chunk plays again to try to get yourself in the field goal range because you don't know the next time Emory Jones is going to be in a game-like situation where it's going to matter. The two-minute drill in operation is going to matter. Right here, you're thinking completion, get a first down, pop your timeout. Give it to Naquan Wright. He's not going to pick up the first down. So that will most likely take us to halftime. I love Dan Mullen. I don't like that. I think they should have taken advantage of those reps. I'm going to veer towards praising Dan Mullen and the fact that his team's got a 35 to 3 lead at halftime. But that's where we're different. The halftime report is coming up in just a moment. 35 3. Florida with the lead over USF at the half. Check in with Kevin coming up. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by RVs and the American Conference on ABC. Just about set for the start of the third quarter, 35 to 3. The Gators on top of USF. Bob Oshusen here with Dan Orlovsky. Chris Bud will join us once again in just a moment. There were some promising moments early on for USF. It went downhill quickly because we now see, in spite of all of that talent that the Gators lost on offense last year, they still have some explosive weapons. It's because the quarterbacks have played so well. You know, Emory Jones, besides that first drive, he's been incredibly explosive with both his arm and as a runner. Anthony Richardson has gotten opportunities, and it's every opportunity that he gets, he takes advantage of it. And while there were some questions on the skill position players, how are they going to replace? They've stepped up. Copeland's been fantastic. And, and I had mentioned the quarterbacks have just been spectacular with their decision making, with the accuracy of their throws. Emory has had some nice plays with his feet, long touchdown run. So it's got to be great for Dan Mullen coming off of last week. And what are we going to do? Emory struggled a little bit to watch both of those guys play so well early on. So USF will start the third quarter with the football. And after a fair catch, they will start at their own 25-yard line. Chris? Yeah, Dan mentioned the decision-making by the quarterbacks, and that's what Dan Mullen was most pleased with, their game management, how they've gone in and out of checks, particularly because this USF defense has shown some different things than what they saw on tape a week ago. So the only thing that I would like to see out of my offense is a little bit more efficiency. More efficient where they were averaging 13 yards per play before the last drive. But I, I love that out of Coach Mullen, you know, kind of very much setting the mindset of we can still do things better and not to rest on, oh, it was easy today. We knew we were going to see both USF quarterbacks as well. And Timmy McLean, the true freshman, starts off the second half with a handoff. And it's a first down carry for Jared Mango. McLean, the lefty, he's got an arm. You know, he came in and had some moments last week against NC State. 7 of 13 for 126 yards, but a couple of interceptions that short-circuited drives. They'll lob one down the sideline here looking for Weaver and a flag out. Avery Helms going to be called. Pass interference, defense, number 24, 15 yards, automatic for the first down. 
the good job by Weaver trying to fight back for the football. Helms got his eyes on it. Just kind of puts his hands on Weaver as he goes down to the ground. You were talking about Timmy McLean, and I'd say two things that stood out were, you know, he thinks fast at the position. It showed, and they just carried himself on tape with it factor. You just want him to value the football way more, not try to win the job on every single snap. Keeper here. That's good for a first down for the Bulls. Well, Jeff Scott told us, had he played better last week, he would have won this job and been the starter today. The reason they went back to Cade Fortin, who was clear cut the best quarterback after the spring and the fall, was because Timmy McClain didn't take the bull by the horns, for lack of a better phrase, and, and take over and win the job. Underthrown ball here, and it's incomplete down to the five yard line. Jason Marshall, step for step in coverage on Demarcus Gregory. Yeah, Gregory does a great job stacking, and Marshall just kind of hand fight, little tug, and then at that last second does a good job of looking back for that ball and getting in the way of Gregory. I, I mentioned it before, what you want is Timmy McClain not to go and strain so hard to go win the job, and that forces you to make mistakes. Zone read here, and Felix lost a yard. We really just want him to, be, to play, I guess that piece to play, hey coach, you called the play, I'm just gonna go operate it and not try to make something, not try to take the job away, but when the opportunity presents itself, operate and execute in the way that tells coach, okay, he's now showing me that he's capable of going out and performing at the expectation level that we have. Blitz coming. McLean, nice sidestep to avoid the pressure. And you have to think USF will go for it on fourth down and four as Moon and Helm combine on the tackle. You know, we get into these conversations all the time with college football quarterbacks when teams are undecided on their starter. Sometimes there's things that a guy can do that another player can't, and that's a perfect example. McLean can go make that play on an unblocked rusher, and Fortin can can't and right now this is where you want to see him grow fourth and five you know you're going to get coverage that you've got to go make a throw here in a tight window blitz coming and he swings a pass to Petit that is underthrown and USF turns it over on downs Amari Bernie is right there tracking Petit yeah, he's going to get man coverage and he wants to find Petit on a swing route left side of your screen right now you know, just a second late, just a, you see that backside backer flow to the back, and because of the pressure, you really want him to see it as a true freshman. Oh, the throw has to go there. And for a guy that played fast last week, you just want him to see that quicker and make sure that ball gets out to Petit, and that's an easy first down. What game draws your eye there? Obviously, the top 10 matchup between Iowa and Iowa State, but an in-state rivalry as well. Later on tonight, Utah BYU on ESPN. Yeah, I, I would say the Iowa Iowa State one though, because Brees Hall for Iowa State, the tailback, <clears throat> excuse me, going against such a great defense in Iowa. You know, you want to see is Iowa State really ready to go take that next step? You know, Iowa's got a top three run game defense since the start of last season. If Iowa State's really going to go and have that huge opportunity this year in the Big 12 and Matt Campbell and going to step forward. They're getting, that, that's a game that they obviously have to go and kind of dominate today. Emory Jones, nice fake. Gets to the edge, and stutter steps for a first down. I mentioned it before, not only the decision making in the pass game, but in the run game as well. Emory sees defensive end, closes down, gives me an open space to my left. And going to get that yard, those yards on that zone read. And I think he's been way more decisive, both as a thrower and a runner. I had it in my notes last week. You know, there's a difference between being a great athlete and a great runner. And he's showing a little bit more of being a great runner today. That puts him over 170 yards of total offense as Jacob Copeland keeps on fighting. And it looks like he may have shoved his way to the first down line to gain. He did. Took Matthew Hill for a piggyback run. Great fight by Copeland. Watch the patience. Slot receiver, push up, come out, catch the ball with your hands, fight up that defender, and keep going. This is his opportunity, the junior from Pensacola says, no, no, 
I don't care what the score says. I'm going to continue to play as hard as I can. And quarterback throws. He throws an interception instead. A clean pick. McCall a point down to the 10 yard line. 49 yards on the return by the point. Yeah, this is the point. He's going to drop down, okay? Now the, you've got to have your eyes on anybody going to the flat right there. The point is already outside the numbers. That is an easy play for him. And Emery just takes that snap and throw it out there. What you want him to do is catch that snap and keep his eyes down the field longer. That's going to make sure that LaPointe doesn't get towards the sideline and get underneath that quick kick drought. I think, and I've said this, and you, Bob, you know it, as Dan, look at, that's what exactly what he does with his hand there. He's saying, hey, he's already out there wider. There is a difference between assuming and predetermining. It's okay to predetermine as a quarterback. You know, I want to work here. But you assume I can get that ball there, that's when you get into mistakes. McLean brought down at the line of scrimmage. Based on how good to that point Henry Jones had been, how much of a dent does that put into the thought process of Dan Mullen going towards that Alabama game next week when you see him go out there against an inferior opponent and still make a mistake like that? that that's a tough one because it's relatively simple, you know? And you know that Emery knows better, that he's smarter than that. And it is a fine line for Dan Mullen and Emery Jones right now because, it again, for the 10th time today, it's his second career start. But that is a relatively simple thing that you don't expect Emory Jones to make. Playing down to the one yard line. It'll be third down and goal. Rashad Torrance saved a touchdown. Now you can see a little bit of the athleticism by McLean. Little fake pitch out, and he just follows his pulling guard and tight end Brinkman and gets inside that one yard line. I think quarterback run is up again for USF. They want to go quickly, and it's an Aaron snap. Loose ball out to the 15 yard line. And it looks like the Gators were not able to recover. It will stay with USF, but they'll have to send a field goal group out now after third and goal at the one becomes fourth and goal at the 15. And one of the downsides when you get into those really short yardage situations, you see the effort by everybody on the field. McLean, Felix, somebody go find the football. When you get at that tempo and kind of short yardage situations, offensive linemen get tense, specifically centers. That ball comes high and hot because they got to snap it and get their hands up so quickly. And that came too quickly for the true freshman. Trell Williams recovered the fumble. And that at least allows Schrader to attempt from 32 yards. He knocks it down the middle. And the Bulls have their second field goal. So the interception thrown by Emory Jones. Turns into three, easily could have been seven, if not for the Justin Shorter hustle play. We're back with our AFLAC trivia question. Aflac. Anthony Richardson and Malik Davis both ran for 100 yards last week against FAU. When was the last time Florida had a quarterback and a position player Run for 100 plus yards in the same game. We'll let Dan I got it. Orlovsky think about that during the kickoff, and then we will shatter his dreams and reveal that he's wrong. Weston will bring it back. Want to take a quick guess? Yeah, I don't have the exact players attached to it, but I think it's going to be Jeff Driscoll era, so maybe 20. No? Let's answer our ad black trivia question. Ad black. Richardson, Davis, actually Tim Tebow and Percy Harvin in the national championship game. Never heard of them. January 8th, 2009, and unfortunately, maybe for our bosses to tune in right now back at ESPN, someone didn't read the game. Percy Harvin was such an awesome player. <laughs> Obviously, Tim was too, but Driscoll probably had 100 as a rusher at some point. Well, maybe somebody took a glance at the game notes and just got the Shut notes away. mixed up. Naquan Wright. Out to the 22-yard line. 
Now, while we were away, boy, the nonstop coaching continues between that coach and everybody that's ever played quarterback for. Yeah, you know, and there was a moment in a FAU game last week where Emory missed a throw, and on tape you can see Dan Mullen almost kind of putting his hands out and going, relax, you know, pushing to the ground a little bit. And I asked him about it, he said, part of my job is to figure out what makes these guys tick. Good job. Emory Jones patiently allowed Xavier Henderson to come open for a first down. Yeah, you use the word that's perfect, patient. Little toss fake, watch the receiver from the right side, Henderson. Now sit in soft space. Emory, keep your eyes, one, two, three, and find Henderson on that cross. You just gotta be patient while you move. But I was talking about Dan Mullen. He, you know, I gotta know what makes guys tick, what gets them calm, what gets them energized, and who needs what. And I just thought it was a really good imagery of he's got a really good pulse for what a player like Emory Jones needs. And in that moment, you know, maybe cussing him out, so to speak, or screaming and yelling at him is not going to pay dividends. Well, Emory Jones is the highest rated quarterback that Dan Mullen has ever recruited as a head coach. But looking at some of the other quarterbacks that he has coached and what he has taken them from and what we may have expected of those players to where they have gone to, whether as a coordinator and a play caller or as a head coach, talking turning Alex Smith into the number one pick in the NFL yeah. the year that he came out of Utah. Tim Tebow, of course, a Heisman Trophy winner, and he became a number one pick. Now, Dak Prescott, and I called Dak Prescott games when he was at Mississippi State, and you thought really good competitive football player and a really good college quarterback as Emory Jones, quarterback draw, picks up the first down. But when you watched Dak Prescott at Mississippi State, did you ever think he was going to become the guy as an NFL player? I didn't expect the guy that was going to be what we saw Thursday night in this stadium. You know, Dak was incredible. And then go back to last year. Kyle Trask. And Kyle Trask was, you know, we did the game when Kyle Trask came in when Felipe two years ago got hurt. And there was all these question marks of what is, who is Kyle Trask? How is he going to be the Florida quarterback? And then he goes and sets the record last year for touchdown passes and becomes a high draft pick for the Buccaneers. And they're coached the right way. Dan Mullen coaches and develops these young quarterbacks the right way. Here's Naquan Wright. Cuts it back. And carries some tacklers close to another Florida first down. It's just over and over again. He takes different kinds of quarterbacks. Yeah, that's a good point. Runs different types of offenses. Accentuates their strengths and I think makes these guys probably as good as they could all collectively be as college football players. We talked to them about that yesterday. How are you gonna take the offense, the players that you have this year, and try to reproduce the success, so to speak, of last year? And he looked at me, he's listen, it's my job. You know, there's multiple ways to do what we did last year and try to find it this way. You just gotta find different ways to do it. And maybe we build our pass game while we've got this very dominant run game throughout the season. Play action fake all day again for Emory Jones to throw, and instead he throws another interception. This one's picked off by Brock Nichols. He tiptoes the sideline. So a couple of times for Emory Jones where maybe he is just not quite seeing it. And it'll be the continued tutorial on the sideline with Dan Mullen after he throws his second pick here in the third quarter. I said last week Emory Jones just played slow. You saw the first interception, the possession to go by LaPointe. Slow. This is a slow rep. The, re the defender up top is just a flat defender. Bottom of the screen, Whittemore is going to be coming on a crosser. One, two, three, four. Ball's out right now. You're two steps late, Emory. And, you know, this is where, watch the left side of your screen. That, that ball is out now. And you're just too late, and you allow that defender to just sink and sink. And this is where you've got to be critical of the performance, not the performer. You know, you've got to be critical that Emory, you're, you're, you're better than this. You, you know you got to value the ball and, and play faster. And you can, and that's what's going to be frustrating for Dan Mullen. Timmy McLean's going to take a shot downfield for the speedster. And Latrell Williams couldn't catch up to the lob for McLean. And I'll be honest with you, if, if you're Dan Mullen, you, you do have to be sitting there with a feeling in your stomach of, uh-oh, that's not good. You know, you, you know that you can't, for as good as he was in the first half, you can't come out and make those two mistakes in the second half. You can see him pointing, hey, you're hanging, 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 and he's talking about that dropping defender. 
And he's telling Emery, listen to your feet, listen to your feet. You go one, two, three, four, five hits, you can't throw that ball that late. There's a quick hitter to Sean Atkins. He's to the 20-yard line. And you're right, if you're Dan Mullen, you have to be sitting there saying, if you're not seeing that against the USF defense, how could I ever imagine you're going to see it when we play Alabama? Yeah, and you're, you're, you're not going to play fast enough. And, and when I say play fast enough, it's a, it's a thinking, it's a processing, it's a decision-making kind of routine that he's just not showing consistently, certainly in the second half. Belly option here to Jaron Mango. And he's down inside the 15 to the 12-yard line, Chris. Yeah, I was listening to Dan Mullen talk to Jones. It's exactly what Dan has said. It's the decision making taking too long to process. He goes, when you hit Hitch and you wait too long, that defender is sitting back there reading what you're doing. Take a step and then throw. Quit waiting. And the plane thought about a quarterback draw instead to the flat to Sean Atkins. And he's inside the one to the half-yard line. Man, Timmy McLean has brought some juice to this offense. This is the third relatively good drive that he's been a part of. You can see his athleticism kind of making those plays to the perimeter of their offense and having a ton of success. I think you can a quarterback run up here. I think you can put him on the perimeter. USF looking for their first touchdown of the season. Mango at the goal line. He's got it. There's a Bulls touchdown. Good job pushed by that right side of the offensive line. Wiggs and Jacobs, along with the senior Brad Cecil, do an awesome job of finally finishing off a drive for the South Florida Bulls. And I mentioned that Timmy McLean has just infused some juice into this offense with his ball distribution and athleticism. Trader tacks on the extra point. Well, USF on their second possession of the game had a long time consuming drive and kicked a field goal. It had been a goose egg since then until back to back picks thrown by Emory Jones sets up their last 10 points. We are back with this week's college football playoff rankings brought to you by Allstate. Alabama, a sizable favorite over Mercer as they head towards next week's matchup with Florida. But there could be a shakeup with Ohio State down by two touchdowns to Oregon. Notre Dame with an early lead on Toledo. And of course, number nine and number 10, Dan Play, coming up next here on ABC. That's going to be a fantastic matchup. I believe Ohio State just scored to turn it into a one score game. I had mentioned that Iowa State game, and then if you look at you know, Iowa's offense with Petrus at his quarterback versus you know, Brock Purdy, a longtime Iowa State guy who's still there, uh, both those quarterbacks will have to make some plays this afternoon. Let's take a look at some stories as we honor those who serve, brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. Jeremiah Moon, his father Greg, served 15 years in the Marine Corps. Wesley McGriff commissioned as a second lieutenant in the U.S. Army in 1990 and in the reserves until 2001. How about USF analyst Will Baylor? Both of his parents in the Air Force. His mom was in the Pentagon on 9-11. And USF guard Demetrius Harris, both parents served in the Navy as well. So plenty to honor. And we thank all of them for their service. Emory Jones, two picks in this quarter, leading to 10 USF points. Play action here. Side arms one to the sideline, and Justin Shorter comes back to make the catch for a first down. Pick up of 13. So my initial thoughts right now with Emery back in the game, you talked about it in the first half, Bob, can you do it? And I said if they're both playing well, you can do it. I'd be ticked off if I was Anthony Richardson right now. I'd go, Coach, I, I want the opportunity to go play. And I think Coach Mullen right now is just trying to instill some confidence in Emory, you can see that coming out and throwing on first down, trying to really go, okay, a couple mistakes, let's get you back. Avoiding a sack, tucking it under, and picking up about seven yards. Yeah, if you're Anthony Richardson after watching back-to-back -back interceptions thrown by Emory Jones, are you sitting there maybe wondering what it's going to take for you to get back on the field? Yeah, I, 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 
I would use different words if I could, but I'd be ticked off. I'd sit there and, hey, man, you know, I, I've had the opportunity. I've played incredibly well. Why can't I go out there and show you more of what I could do after those mistakes? Damian Pierce easily picks up the first down. Eight of 11. And I'm, I promise you it's being thought by teammates as well. You know, your teammates can see. I'm sure some of those teammates were sitting there going, okay, is Anthony going to go out there? Is, Anthony, is, is it now going to go be Anthony's turn after those two interceptions by Emory Jones? After the Gators ran for 400 yards last week, they're over 200 on the ground today. And they'll add to it here. Emory Jones spins for four and a half more. Chris? Yeah, Richardson not quite as vocal as Dan would be in this situation. He has not gone up, talked to Dan Mullen at all. Really, it just kind of sat by himself, smiling with his teammates, but has not pleaded his case. It's a good teammate. It's a good teammate. I'm sure I, I would hope inside, I would hope inside he's sitting there going, I, I want to go get some run. But being a good teammate in that situation, great maturity by AR. Maybe he just likes his passer rating to sit right where it is right now. Two for two for 116 yards and a touchdown. Well, I mean, it kind of goes back to what Dan Mullen said about the relationship and the friendship and the competition. And hey, you, we asked him, do you like the relationship and, and how those guys, you know, Anthony came out and supported Emory last week. He's like, yeah, it was cool. But I'd also like for one of those guys to just want to go rip the job away from the other. And so it's good, but also it, maybe it's not so good in the sense of wanting to, one of those guys to go take leadership of it. It'll be fourth down as Emory Jones picks up a couple and Florida will leave their offense on the field. Well, and Anthony Richardson was there on Twitter at least to support Emory Jones. Said, look, stay tuned and watch my guy work. He knows what he's doing. For any That's basically the backup quarterback kind of reading between the lines saying to Gators fans, I'm not part of a quarterback controversy. I'm doing my part but I'm going to support Emory Jones as well. I think it shows great maturity and character. It does. Malik Davis empties the backfield. Emory Jones, fourth down floater. Is that hauled in by Rick Wells? Broke it up. Couldn't hang on as he went to the deck. It's a beautiful throw by Emory Jones. Wells tried to get that right hand stuck out. It's great fight again as he can't just completely secure it all the way to the ground. But how about the South Florida defense getting off the field, giving the ball back to the young quarterback? Played book. Any of these games draw your interest tonight? As we just blow right past that Booker McFarland. Yeah, I mean, so. look, he didn't throw for 10,000 yards today. <laughs> just so we're clear, you probably ate 10,000 calories, though. Oh boy. Um, yeah, I think the BYU Utah game is interesting, just because Charlie Brewer, the transfer, how well he plays. Uh, we've talked the Iowa Iowa State game, Arizona State. I think there's a lot of really good, challenging college football games. This Desmond Watson, he was 480 pounds when he got to Florida. He's lost 80. They've got him listed as, as an even 400. <laughs> My favorite thing about him is he's wearing 21. He is tough to move. There's an inaccurate throw from Timmy McClain. He was offered by Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, Mississippi State, Florida State, ended up coming to Florida. So it's not like he was just a big body that Florida took a chance on. There were yeah. plenty of other programs that knew that Desmond Watson could play some football. Yeah, and, and I, I think Florida realizes special talent. And if they can control some of the things within when it comes to his size and make sure he plays at a super athletic weight, he's going to be an impactful defensive tackle. Comes a Gator Blitz. McLean trying to escape, and he'll throw it away. 
Mordecai McDaniel came right up the middle as part of a safety blitz. Along with the pressure of Trevez Johnson. Timmy McLean just looks smooth. I know it's a throw, but just he looks smooth. And Jeff Scott, that head coach, has got to be thinking, you know, maybe I'm watching a guy that we are going to turn to. He said the first four weeks of our season, win and develop and grow, but also figure out who's going to be our starter when we get into the heart of our conference schedule. Andrew Stokes, that is a shank. And that is going to give the Gators the ball potentially near midfield. That's actually a very generous South Florida spot to the 40-yard line. There's been plenty of good with Emory Jones. How about the picks? Well, he's going to watch the corner get soft and just assume that means easy coverage. LaPointe drops underneath. He doesn't see the whole picture. Now we got the play-action crosser. Ball's out now. Look at all that space you can throw to. Just drive it. But he hitch, 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 and he's so late. Watch he one, two, three, four, five. That's five hitches. You will forever be taught as a quarterback when you are throwing the crossing route, if you haven't thrown that ball by that second or at most third hitch, bud, move on to the check down. And I think that's the thing. We started this show by saying, as AR is back in, watch his feet. And that's the perfect example of where he struggled last week and has hit in the second half today. So Anthony Richardson does get another chance to carry it himself. Lowers his shoulders, comes close to a first down, picked up about eight and a half. I'm going to watch this super intently, me, Dan Orlovsky, because I want to see Anthony Richardson show me you want this job by the way you play, by the way you carry yourself, capitalize on Dan Mullen going, all right, little struggle by number five, Emory Jones. Let me see if you can handle the moment. Another quarterback keeper. First down. Does it say anything to you that this is a young quarterback that comes to Florida and has no problem putting on 15 <laughs> as well? What's that said about Anthony Richardson? Or did he just not did he not read the media guide? <laughs> I think everyone knows who wore 15 at Florida. I'm excited to watch the fourth quarter with him in that jersey. Show me that you want this job. Head of the court gators. Florida has had some great quarterbacks over the years. I'm not sure how many of them, though, could do something like this. Jeez. That's Anthony Richardson in pregame warm-ups, just because he can. Imagine just, say, jog down with the team. OK, here I come. Is that a call, the round off, or a back handspring, or? With sure, a, a yes. Landed like a butterfly. <laughs> with sore feet. That was insane. Helmet on. He's been a big play machine these first couple of weeks. And we'll see if Dan Mullen gives him the game the rest of the way after Emory Jones has thrown a couple of third quarter interceptions. Here is Anthony Richardson off play action. Rolling the pocket, floats one down the sideline. Copeland has it inside the 10. This is just, these are these wow plays by 15. Play action, move the pocket, you're taking your shot. Nothing's there, I gotta move. Keep my eyes downfield, off balance, fade away, off platform throw, and it's an absolute pearl to Jacob Copeland. Look at the athleticism, see his eyes? Stay downfield and just that flick the wrist while I'm taking that hit, and you're throwing a ball into a very tight window. He misses that, that's a pick. I mean, Anthony Richardson looks like a guy that can flat out be a difference maker for Florida. I want people to know how hard that is, Bob. I mean, you, you, that play action pass was meant for him to move to his right. <laughs> he can't, so now he has to move to his left. You see these, like, watch. And then that throw is perfect. I mean, this is clearly a catch. That's a catch in the NFL. That looked like two feet down, complete control from Jacob Copeland. So this, I don't think, is one they have to spend too much time reviewing. That's a catch. He's got 152 yards passing now. Both Emory Jones and Anthony Richardson each dead even with 152 yards passing. And now Richardson's helmet popped off. 
So he's going to have to leave the field for one play unless Florida calls a timeout to get him back out there. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Completed pass, first down Florida. Watch this again, right? You're, you're, you're going to get a play action pass movement. Go to your right. Put your foot in the ground because you can't. Run away from people, someone barreling down on you and throw a 50-yard ball, 45-yard ball against man coverage. There, there's things that just players, certain players just have talent that you can't necessarily coach it into them. That's a, a great example of, hey, this kid can just do some stuff that a lot of people are unable to do. Quarterback run. Emory Jones, and we'll see if Anthony Richardson, especially with that last terrific pass, earns his way right back onto the field after losing his helmet for a play, or if Dan Mullen's going to stick with Emory Jones here inside the five-yard line. I would not be able to contain my emotion as well as Anthony Richardson is. It looks emotion-free. It's maturity, to be honest with you. I wouldn't be mature enough to to just stand there and watch somebody else run my football team. I can see that. Play action. Emory Jones floats one end zone. That could have easily been picked. Threw it into traffic late again as Jaden Curry had a chance. Trent Whittemore, the intended receiver. Yeah, it's one to two. You're, you're looking for Copeland to the left. It's not there. As Whittemore comes, now you throw that ball high into that pylon. And that's very similar to the interception he threw last week against FAU. And it should have been an interception. And again, I am shocked that Anthony Richardson is not on the field. I think the Gator fans that are here, there was some booze we just heard. I think they're thinking the same thing. Emory Jones. That'll be fourth down and goal as he finds Malik Davis down to the one yard line. This is definitely going to be a storyline to pay attention to in Gainesville because you've got this young player that has done nothing but be electric when he's got in the field and there's only so much you can hold back. You put all the work in and you take advantage of your opportunities when you get put in there and then you kind of feel like it's getting snatched away from you. What, what's the deal, Coach? Play action. Back of the end zone again, a lob looking for the tight end. And that's broken up. Nick Elkstis. The intended receiver. And he was not able to haul it in. So it's a turnover on downs. USF has it when we come back. Welcome back. Extra Yard for Teachers Week is an annual effort led by the College Football Playoff Foundation that brings college sports together to support and honor great teachers across the country, games and on social media. To learn more about Extra Yard for Teachers, follow CFP Extra Yard. And today we honor Michael Wiggs' parents. First of all, Michael playing for South Florida, pursuing a master's degree in exercise science. Both of his parents are teachers. His dad, Ricky, an assistant principal with the Department of Juvenile Justice in Polk County, and mom, Carla, an assistant principal at Lake Gibson Middle School. He says he appreciates so much growing up with both parents as teachers didn't allow him very much. On. After the turnover on downs, a shot from the end zone, and the play out to midfield. Xavier Weaver. 44 yards. Okay, Timmy McLean. Watch Weaver on the post here. Win over the top. And now go run to that ball. Track it down. Catch the back end of it. What a great throw by Timmy McLean. Okay. That's what you look like, Pat. <laughs> Low snap. McLean handles it. And goes down. He lost about three. Desmond Watson with the tackle. And let's check in with Kevin. Oh, 
Well, looked like only one timeout as well for Ohio State, so they're going to be able to take a minimum of 90 seconds, maybe almost two minutes off the clock. Marion Felix picks up the three that McLean just lost, but it's third down and ten. I think this is a good opportunity for one really impressed with USF and just their fighting as a football team. They're, you know, they've, they've stayed in this game, and then Timmy McLean has just been lights out. He looks the part. He has brought energy and juice both as a runner and a thrower. What a great opportunity. Third and ten. You got Florida up in the line of scrimmage. They're giving you a blitz. Can you communicate to the offense what you guys want to do? Read the coverage and find the right throw. And now a timeout will be called by the Gators on defense from the sideline. First time out of the half. Florida, 30 seconds. Media timeout. 35-13, the Gators have the lead. College football on ABC is presented by Arby's. We have the means. It's been a while since Tim Tebow in Florida beat Alabama in the 2008 SEC championship game. The last time the Gators beat the Tide, they will have their latest opportunity next week. Back then, there was no doubt who the quarterback would be wearing 15. They've got another 15, who I think there are some folks in Gainesville are hoping will play a larger role in this game next week than he even has played in today's game against USF, but Alabama's won seven consecutive matchups with the game. And Alabama just looks so good. They looked so good last week against Miami. Explosive on offense, dominant and physical on defense. After the timeout, third down and 10, Timmy McClain. And now it's fourth down and eight. With 11.20 to go. And USF is going to punt. This is a white flag waving here to me. I mean, you've got a freshman quarterback, I get that. But you're down by three scores with 11 minutes to go. He's made some plays for you. Why are you punting here? Yeah, I get your angle. I, you know, I think as a head coach, you're trying to go through this process if you're Jeff Scott of playing good football. Certainly fourth and eight is a little different than fourth and two. So I, I can understand, hey, punting, and let's just try to continue to teach our young football team how to play the game the right way situationally. Yeah, I don't know if I would want to go through the motions as a player yeah, and yeah. learn how to play better. I would maybe want my head coach no, to make decisions you. where I would have a chance to continue to, to win. As we take a look at our game track brought to you by Mission Tiger. And let's look at the numbers that Anthony Richardson has put up so far today. As again, he has been a big play machine. Yeah, I mean, we saw a play action bomb early on, but it was a perfect throw to Copeland. Don't care if he was wide open. And we saw another opportunity with him as a playmaker on that play action where he moves to his left and throws against man coverage. So I've been impressed with him. I was very impressed with him last week on tape. And I've been impressed with his maturity. And I've been blown away, blown away with him as a thrower. He'll run it here. Breaking tackles. Anthony Richardson in the open field. Stays on his feet. A big play machine. 80 yards. Touchdown. And he comes up limping. That is the last thing that a Gator fan wants to see. Man, I hope that young man is okay, because he is special, electrifying, dynamic. Boy, best case scenario, in the heat and humidity today, maybe that's just the quick onset of a cramp, and he'll be able to shake that off. Yeah. But regardless of who starts the game next week, regardless of whether or not there's a quarterback controversy, Listen. You want Anthony Richardson to play a role in the game next week against Alabama. Listen to the fans. I mean, they know it. Bob, I would just ask you this. How do you keep him off the field? Injury may be the only way that it happens. 
I think it's tough to say in your football team, we're going to play the best who, who will help us to win the most. But how about a quarterback on a zone read that runs through a safety and then has the ability to stiff arm and run away from defenders with long speed. 15 has shown up and shown out. Florida, that's your starting quarterback. Welcome back to ESPN College Football, presented by Arby's. Well, there's Anthony Richardson staying on the sideline. Ice pack on the hamstring, got the headset on. And he is trying to walk it off, but you could see at the end as we went to break of the touchdown run, his third explosive touchdown play of the day. He grabbed at the back of the right hamstring. And now, you are a Gators fan, you're thinking about Alabama next week, and you are left to wonder about that young man's physical condition going into a game where if you pulled off the upset, it could make your season. And, you know, how do you go pull off the upset, or if you do it? I just, I don't think you need to be a football expert to be able to watch Anthony Richardson have played last week and then this week in comparison to you know some of the stuff that Emory Jones has done results wise and say yeah you know 15 doesn't give us more. Another update with Kevin. Back here in Tampa, McLean hands one off to Brian Batie, and he weaves his way and keeps the pile moving. Looks like he'll get a push for a first down. But look, if you're a Clemson fan, you're an Ohio State fan, you don't want to hear this. If you're just generally speaking a college football 100%. fan, losing those two teams in the first couple of weeks of the season, that throws a whole different dynamic into the college football regular season than we've seen in the last, feels like, decade. Yeah, first of all, the OH, oh no, by Booger was spectacular. Um, yeah, I think it's good for college football. I love Ohio State and Ryan Day, and I love Dabo and Clemson. But to get Oregon into the picture now of going, ooh, you know, a, a different team that maybe is really resurging, or surging, so to speak, and Mario Cristobal, their head coach, has done an awesome job. And now it's, we've been begging for other teams to get into the college football playoff picture. And it certainly seems that Oregon has inserted itself into that conversation. The winner of the Iowa State-Iowa game, yeah. Cincinnati. Yeah, I mean, some of good. these other teams that are in the top 10 are knocking on the door. You know, they, they see the, the teams that basically have just been fixtures in the college football playoff lose early. Now, that's not to say that there still isn't a pathway for Clemson and Ohio State if they run the table to be back in the playoff. But it does make this season, you look at it through a completely different lens right. when those two teams lose early as they have. And I also think it's great for coaches around college football to show their teams, hey, some of these programs that people had dubbed maybe untouchable or unbeatable, if you play good, you can get them. You know, I'm sure there weren't a ton of people going, man, Oregon is going to go knock off Ohio State, and I believe it was in Columbus. You know, they, they can go do it, and you, it's great for even a guy like Dan First Mullen the as they play Alabama next week. Hey, guys. 30 seconds. It doesn't matter what necessarily what people say. You can do it. We've seen it twice in the first two weeks. Media timeout. USF calls timeout. We'll have third down when we come back. Taco Bell welcomes you to the Live Moss Student Section of the Year Contest. Use the hashtag Student Section Sauce. Get the committee's attention and go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell and see how your school can compete. There were about 12,000 in the USF Student Section earlier today. And USF put a little bit of a scare. 
back in the first quarter to the Gators, but a combination of Emory Jones in the first half, certainly, and Anthony Richardson throughout. Explosive touchdown plays, and it's a 42-13 Gators lead. Pitch and catch to Felix. And he is about two, two and a half yards shy of a first down. So it'll be fourth down. That's fourth down and four. I'd like to see Coach Jeff Scott go for this one. He just he punted last time. I'd like to see you put Timmy McLean in this situation to see if you can go get, you know, kind of will your team to a first down. And they're punting again. My, my thing would be this. Third and eight, you got to the line of scrimmage, you saw the coverage, you checked to essentially what was a swing screen, and it got you four or five yards. If you're going to check to that play in that situation, it should be because you're planning on going for it on fourth down. Fenley Graham calls for a fair catch. At his own 13-yard line. Well, Anthony Richardson's day is done, but he certainly put on enough of a show before he tweaked his hamstring on his last touchdown. Just look at the revolutions of the football spin as you see the white to Copeland, little fake quarterback power pop. Again, the coverage isn't there, but both those throws are perfect. And then, as a quarterback, do you have the ability to, one, run through a safety, and then, two, run away from a different safety? And you see both of those abilities on the long touchdown run by Anthony Richardson. He's just put on a show today, and he's taken advantage of every single opportunity that Dan Mullen has put him in. Jones hands one to Marcus Bowman. No gain on first down. Well, here's hoping that that hamstring injury is just a mild little tweak yeah. strain. That as the week goes on, he's going to be okay. Because that matchup with Alabama next week is way more interesting if Anthony Richardson's a part of it than not. Yeah, because, I mean, he's averaged 38-plus yards per touch today. That's ridiculous. And so now, as a defense, if you're Alabama, who's got a remarkable defense, those guys are going to cut on the tape and go, wow, this kid is, looks good. He does some stuff to their offense that, that's just a little different. And, you know, for Dan Mullen, I do think he's getting close to a decision-making opportunity, decision-making time. And if you think that Anthony Richardson is mentally, mature-wise, capable of maybe dealing with some struggle that he might face against Alabama, and if he's healthy, I think it's tough to not sit there and go, okay, young man, here's, here's an opportunity. After Deion Reynolds was caught behind the line on the jet sweep, it is third down and 15 for the Gators. Taking as much time off the clock as possible. Coming up on seven minutes to go. And they'll keep it on the ground with Lorenzo Lingard. And the Gators will kick it away. I don't think necessarily that the stretch of play calls by Dan Mullen, three straight runs, is an indication of Emory right now. I just think it's an indication more of the situation of the game. Backup offensive line. You're up 29. You're really focused on getting to the back end of this game and then getting your football team prepared for next week. Xavier Weaver makes the first man miss. Gets loose to midfield. Blockers out in front. Terrific return by Weaver. All the way down inside the 30-yard line to the Gators 27 as we check it again with Kevin. Trey Marsh now in a quarterback for USF, hands to Darian Felix. And if you start getting losses from teams like Notre Dame and 
Texas A&M as well today. You can have a lot of new blood entering the college football Pandemonium. playoff conversation early in this season. I would imagine that Notre Dame would figure out a way to win that football game. And A&M, you'd have to figure, would probably do the same. Yeah, it's early. Colorado can be a tough place to play. I gotta ask you a question because I've been wanting to. See, I've had this one in my head for three days, and you know oh, my maturity no. level is minimal. Wow. I'm a big, you know, what would you rather guy? And I think of the mascots for both these teams, Gators and Bulls. What would you rather? You have to answer, by the way. You can't say I don't know. I would rather be a Gator or a Bull. Nope, nope. We're gonna get this, to it. I want to let this play go. Yep. I was gonna say this is what has been kicking around in your head for three days. <laughs> it says a lot. Yeah. Okay, so. What would you rather the situation be? That you have to go into a, you know, your average backyard swimming pool, 40 feet by 20 feet, and the gator is in the pool, and it's not starving, but it's, it, it's, it wants a snack. You gotta go in the water for 10 minutes, or would you rather go into like a bull fighting ring with a bull wearing, I don't know, red for 10 minutes? Which one would you rather be a part of? Oh, uh, the bull, there's no question. Really? Absolutely no question. Little pop pass over the middle. That'll go down to about the two or three yard line to Mitchell Brinkman. You'd rather go into yes. with the bull? I think I speak the same language as the bull. I think the bull looks at me and my body type. I think the gator looks at me and I am a kebab. Yeah. Like I am an hors d'oeuvre. You know, that I just look they very the, good to a gator. gator. You should take the gator. Touchdown to Jaron Mangum. So the second touchdown of the day for USF with 4.22 to go. That's a tough side. Good job. Left side of that offensive line continuing to play. Cecil and Harris and Jennings and Mangum getting in. That sign said University of Sad Fans. Bud, I went to UConn. We're on the struggle bus right now, so I feel you. Forty-nine twenty, and we've got a few upcoming AAC football games on ESPN Plus to tell you about this afternoon. Cincinnati Murray State. That game is underway, and then next Saturday night, the Bulls host Florida A&M. 7 Eastern. That's just two of over 20 games on ESPN Plus this season. If you're an AAC fan, you have to have it. Sign up. ESPNplus.com slash AAC. It has to at least be a little bit of a good sign. That Anthony Richardson is just staying on the sideline, right? He's not in the tint of injury. He's just got some ice on the hamstring. Yeah. And it's not like they had to take him back to the locker room, get him immediate treatment. Hopefully it, it is just a, a tweak on that 80-yard touchdown run that he had because he's appointment viewing. Yeah. What the rest of the season, if you're a Gators fan or just a college football fan, that the name Anthony Richardson is gonna make the rounds. And folks are going to want to watch him play. Yeah. Well, coming up next, our ABC College Football Day continues. The only top 10 matchup in college football today. And it's the in state rivalry, Iowa. Iowa State in Ames. As soon as we're done, they'll take over at 4 30 Eastern. Then Saturday Night Football presented by Capital One. Michigan, Washington. You can always watch. The game's on the ESPN app as well. Now we had Michigan last week against Western Michigan. They look very good. And Washington coming off of a rough loss last week. And Anthony Richardson, we talked about a command performance whenever he's on the field, but he's putting up numbers we haven't seen from a Florida quarterback since Tim Tebow. And the number, right? Where in the number? I'm not going to start comparing the <laughs> team, trust me. Demarcus Bowman on the pitch. Very well executed option with Emory Jones, and he picks up 26. You had mentioned Michigan, Western Michigan for us last week. Speed option by Emory, Emory Jones. He gets it on the perimeter by Bowman. Something that he's done well, but you know, 
Michigan, Western Michigan, Michigan tonight, Washington, the physicality of their run game. You know, we saw, we've seen Anthony Richardson, right, go off today. We had a similar young quarterback last week with J.J. McCarthy for Michigan go, and th this kid's a special player. They got to figure out a way to get him on the field. Well, there are times where you can take a look at the incumbent starter and then take a look at the incredibly talented freshman backup and say, the freshman backup can just do things yeah. that the starter can't do. Yeah. Right? Cade McCarthy can, or J.J. McCarthy can do things that Cade McNamara can't do. Richardson can do things Emory Jones can't do. Yeah. Where do you strike that balance with their inexperience, knowing you want to try and lean on the player that's got way more game experience than the freshman backup, but that freshman backup, his ceiling, if he's out there making plays, he's going to do things for your football team that the veteran starter can't do. I think for Dan Mullen, too, that can give him some peace when it comes to this quarterback competition slash situation is left tackle. Richard Garage has played a ton of snaps. Ethan White Jr., ton of snaps. Egu Khan is coming on as a sophomore at center. Stuart Reese, graduate. Gene DeLance. You know, there's so much experience on his offensive line that you're not putting a young freshman quarterback out there behind an offensive line that's not going to be relatively capable of protecting, right? And so that's why I think when you look at it, and Anthony Richardson, it's not necessarily is he ready to handle everything. It's can he go and perform with the stuff that we give him? And then can he elevate some of our X's and O's? And can he erase some of our mistakes? And I think he can do more of that for this offense in Gainesville at that quarterback spot. Emory Jones, for reasons passing understanding, is about to throw the football, and now he'll take a sack. And unless USF calls timeout, at this point the Gators can go to victory formation. Yeah, and, and this is another opportunity for Emory to get the ball out of his hands. You want to take a shot downfield and it's not there. Move, move. Find a, find a check down, something, instead of just holding that football there. And I think that's something that Dan Mullen is going to have to sit down and watch tape and figure out and talk to Emory about is, hey, why is this happening? For Why did this happen really in the second half? He was so good in the first half. And why did it happen more in the second? You know, does that make sense with the, when we're talking about Anthony Richardson, is he a player that he can elevate the X's to those? You know, sometimes you call the play so he can do more if the defense wins the rep. Does Dan Mullen think that? But then can he erase some of our mistakes? So, oh shoot, the left guard got beat or, you know, receivers getting beat up in man coverage. Well, he can kind of, because of it, that has his jaw jopping athleticism, can he erase some of those mistakes? Jones will hand one more off to Lingard, and that should do it. There is not a reason for Florida to run another play. And they will be able to hop on the bus and take a win back to Gainesville. And a quarterback question regarding the health status of that young man, Anthony Richardson, and the role that he will be able to play next week in the matchup with Alabama. But he and Emory Jones, it's a big conversation happening in Gator World right now as to which player should be the number one quarterback. Will Richardson be ready next week for Dan Mullen? But a 42-20 final, that was more lopsided than it would even appear as the Gators win going away here in Tampa. Coming up next on ABC College Football Scoreboard, Kevin Nagandi, Booger McFarland are standing by, and then Iowa, Iowa State is coming up shortly. The day's news and highlights coming up with Kevin and Booker. Thanks for watching.